Well, once again, um, I'm in the unfortunate position to have to stand before you and tell you we had an officer get killed in the line of duty. Uh, his name was uh, Robert French. He's a 21-year veteran of our department, well-known, well-respected training officer in our department. Uh, he was killed. Uh, he died on the way to the hospital uh, during the treatment for his gunshot wounds. Um, he is survived by his living girlfriend. He has adult children and grandchildren and his sister who are all um, at the hospital. Um, the two CHP officers that suffered gunshot wounds are both in stable condition, expected to survive, and more information will be released about them from the CHP um, later on. But I'm happy to answer whatever questions that I can. What do you mean by stable condition? Are they in good, fair, are they going to survive? Well, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to misuse the condition, uh, misuse the, if it has a technical term, uh, but they are both in, in condition that they will recover from. Do you have details on the, on the gunshot wounds to all, all three officers? Uh, I do not. Um, I know that our officer was shot once in the side, uh, and it looks as though it entered his um, chest cavity, uh, which ultimately caused his death. Can you repeat the deputy's name? His name is Robert French. goes by Bob. He was not. He was one outside on the perimeter. Uh, can you tell us anything else about the deputy that you lost today? Um, it, you know, the, there's there's really not a whole lot more to tell. I mean, obviously, words aren't really going to make an appropriate illustration of you know him as a man or his career. So you know, certainly, as as more time gets passes. And as the situation becomes a little less dynamic and comes to resolution tonight, there'll be time for that. There'll be time, and we'll certainly celebrate him as we as we do all of our fallen in, in this state and beyond. Uh, and and it, it will be our pleasure to share some more personal information about him as, as time goes on. Can you say anything today is the day for you and, and for all of the law enforcement agencies? Well, clearly it's tough. I mean, you know, we 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 know we have a great community here. It's not often that we that we uh, are forced to prove it and, and have everybody come together. I mean, those CHP officers still need our prayers. Um, our officer's family needs prayers um, and support. And of course, there'll be services and remembrances coming in the next days and, and weeks ahead. Um, you know, this is certainly uh, the most difficult thing any department can go through. And it's not just our department. I mean, we lost a deputy sheriff, but the entire community and all agencies lost a brother officer um, and that's just something you don't come back from. We will survive this. We will as a community and we'll survive together. We've been through it before, um, but it is painful and uh, it will take a period of grieving uh, and we will come together and through it with, with courage and resolve. Can you just talk about, Sergeant Turnbull mentioned it, just how in this climate, this job is getting harder and harder. And when you hear about something like this, what happened today, what goes through your mind? It, it's a tremendously difficult job. I mean, even from the time that I spent on patrol to now, um, it's much more dangerous. It's much more volatile. It's much more dynamic. I mean, the reality is we can train people uh, as, as best we can in terms of officer safety. But, you know, the reality is if someone is willing to take that first shot, there's very little we can do in, in defense. And, um, you know, you have, uh, you know, as the facts will will start to get out later about this event, it was an extremely dynamic a horrific series of events that have that have occurred and, and maybe will continue to occur, um, and it's it's just an unfortunate byproduct. I I, I thank God that the the CHP officers are that will be okay, and it, it wasn't worse, but you know it's still a tragedy that we're all and by all of us, I mean the entire community will have to go through. Can you tell us more about what Officer fire? French worked as or what his duties were over the last 21 years? He was worked in a variety of assignments, like most of the officers with that tenure, but he was currently assigned to North Patrol uh, just as a patrol officer, and he was also a training officer. So he was um, responsible for training new officers on patrol and very well respected, a very um, a go-to guy for um, advice and, and counsel, not with just not just with career advice, but tactical advice and, and things like that. Very well respected. Sure. Can you talk to us about the fire and what kind of weapon I, I, I don't know at this point if he was able to return fire. Um, obviously, that will come out in the investigation in the days to follow. Um, my understanding of the suspect's weapon, it was a high-powered assault-style weapon that was being shot at uh, all of the officers. Sheriff, can you talk to us about uh, the French role today? What, what was the biggest response? Uh, response? Well, I can say uh, without revealing too much about the investigation is that the, the the folks that were in that motel were the subject of an investigation. 
uh, and our officer was there assisting with um, with that investigation at that point. He wasn't assigned to the investigation, uh, but which is is common is our officer that officer put himself on that to assist the investigation. And are there still two people outstanding in that room? We don't know. I mean, obviously, we are uh, you know, the dynamics of the investigation. It's still very very dynamic. You can tell there's a lot of uh, activity still going on at the hotel. There were a number of people that um, were around that are not yet accounted for, and so we want to make sure that not only are all uh, potential suspects taken into custody, um, but that also everybody else in this area, as well as that hotel, are accounted for and safe. Can you confirm if the rapid transit buses are being used to evacuate those who are still? I, I don't know that. Maybe maybe Tony would know that. I don't know. What do you know about um, Deputy French's family? Yeah, he's survived by a, a living girlfriend. He has adult children and grandchildren uh, and a sister. Do you have his age? He is 52. How old are you 52. 21 years. 21 years. Is that, did I get that right? Yes. Prior to shots being fired, were the suspects in this case considered to be armed and dangerous? I, I don't know what information the investigators had before they went up there. That That's obviously part of it, and um, we'll be debriefing on all of that. But I, I don't know as I stand here what information they had. that this is what sounds like started as an investigation into uh, you know an auto theft and it ends with an officer that's not coming home and then two others who are injured I mean just what a what do you make of just the way that the turn that that day took it's nothing that we don't do a hundred times a day in this county uh, and in counties all across this state and the country there was nothing remarkable about this um, like like so many other tragedies that we've experienced, not just in this community, but certainly applicable, but in other communities. Um, there is nothing unusual or remarkable about it, um, except for the outcome and the circumstances that unfolded. Can you talk about the response from other communities, the officers from other communities? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about that, because it, it is appropriate to thank everybody. I mean, I've gotten um, phone calls from every chief of police in the area and beyond, sheriffs from all over the state. I've got a call from the attorney general. Um, just committing whatever resources and that that they have that we might need. And now, fortunately, we're a large agency and we have a lot of help here from the everybody from the Elk Grove Police Department. The Lincoln Police Chief uh, Doug Lee came down. City Police Chief Dan Hahn offered uh, whatever assistance we need. You can just see behind me all the different officers that are here, but that's only a small fraction of the folks that offered their assistance. Um, uh, not only during the investigation, but in, in the days and weeks to come. Do we have a number of amount of officers that are out here from the different agencies? I, I, I couldn't even begin to count. Between the, the crime scene that's going on in the command post, um, I, I would uh, say it's, I, I'd have to say it's probably 100 or more. And is that common, or was it just with the situation? Well, you have a, you have a very active crime scene. You have three officers who were shot. You have um, gun, uh, you have gunfire exchanges in, in more than one location. You have a, a high-speed chase, so you have many different scenes to process. You have two different agencies that were directly involved, many others that were collaterally involved. So um, this is an extremely unusual circumstance in, in that regard. So um, you know, for that, it would not be unusual to see this many officers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can I get your Thank name you. and title again? Sheriff Scott Jones. Common spelling.